Welcome to the Trades and Secrets podcast. My name is Jeremy Winger. I'm here with Mark Dudek. He is, and forgive me if I butcher your name, but he is the hardscape hacker. And I've known this guy before he moved from, you know, Timbuktu to Florida. And he has been just crushing it when it comes down to decorative concrete, when it comes down to specific style of hardscaping, because my background's in the green industry and there's a lot of different kinds of hardscaping, which we'll dig into. But man, I'm, I'm really pumped to have you on the show because I, I want to dig into a couple of different areas, both on the professional side of it, but also on the customer side of it, because there's a lot of things that most people don't realize when it comes to the work that goes into not only grading the ground, being able to strategize and be able to plan it out. Out, find out if there's any lines in the ground, right? And make sure that you're not going over, going over any cable lines that are like two inches in the ground. But um, but it's it's interesting because the, within the family of hardscaping, so to speak, there's always a flywheel when it comes to everyone who starts out in lawn care, right? Everyone who uh, begins a chuck becomes a chuck in a truck, you know, <laughs> and and then and then they go to landscaping and then they get graduate to hardscaping and then within that whole entire level of hardscaping, there's so many different categories between decorative concrete, man-made stone, natural stone, flag stone, et cetera. I mean, that was my first venture ever. And we, you know, revamped and overhauled that. So I know that really well. But when it comes to like when it comes to what you do in the in hardscaping and I, I, all the stuff that comes with it, what are what's the biggest misconception that people have when it comes to hardscaping? I know it's not just that they think they can do it without you, but what <laughs> like what is the biggest misconception most people have? It's cheap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's first. First of all, let, let me let me start off by saying I'm I'm super honored to be the 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 guest on the very first podcast, man. This is awesome. Uh, super honored to be here. Um, yeah. So it's yeah. Everybody thinks you know it's they, they go to Home Depot and, and price a few hard uh, landscaping stones and your know, walkway stones and retaining wall stones and they they think that's what it's going to cost. You know, if they have a professional to. Well, it's, it's like with any other trade, you know, it, it's DIY versus hiring the pros. You can do it yourself for $500. If you hire a pro, it's going to cost five grand right. because you're paying for the years of knowledge and skill. So, you know, it, it, I, I always get that. I always get the, the uh, noted sticker shock whenever I send a, a quote. And, and uh, you know, so, yeah, price is, is definitely the biggest, the biggest misconception. Well, I think even too, like with like a lot of times because of that misconception, people aren't connecting the dots between increasing their equ the equity in their home and the value of their home. And that was one of the biggest things right. that we encountered, especially like I mean, this is back 10 years ago. You know, it hasn't changed today. It's probably ramped up, amplified even more. Um, when, when you're, <laughs> when, and that's the best, the, I wouldn't say, well, I, I would say entertaining, uh, because on, on the professional side of stuff, on the contractor side of stuff, you're just waiting back, sitting to see what the reaction is going to be, especially when you mm -hmm. give them a sticker shock. Have you ever given them the price up front, kind of like saying ballparking, this is where it'll start at. Is that within your boundaries of your budget kind of thing? Have you ever done that? Or is it always like afterwards? I've done it on a couple of occasions, just trying to get a feel for what they're looking to spend and what their budget is. Because if you ask them, if you ask any potential client outright, you know, what's your budget? What do you, 99 times out of hundred, they're going to say, Oh, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You might get the one that actually, you know, did their did their due diligence, plan some stuff out, right. you know, talk to other people and actually say, I have X amount of dollars set aside for this, you know, one out of 100. Everybody else is, is the guy. Yeah, it's always that Scooby-Doo. Oh, you know, and, I, and that's. And that's what's interesting, too, because with what you do, like run me through some of the process, too, because I, we both know that even if someone knew how to do it, they're not going to do it. Their time is more important and their family time being present is more important than them being in the backyard with a three month unfinished project. Always happens. Um, you know, even if they do hire Uncle Uncle Charles to come do it three months later, they're calling you to fix it. Right. And so, like it's always three months. You know, it takes that long to be able to swallow the pride. It's really weird. It's always around that time frame. You know, and, and, but with what you do in hardscaping, when it comes down to being able to, like, of course, lay the footer, everything in between, what makes what you do different than when it comes to like flagstone, when it comes to all of the, um, all the like different types of like interlocking, any, anything that when it comes down to even like Bell Guard, Home, Home Depot, Lowe's type of pavers, what, like, what is like, what's the biggest differentiator between the, between what you do as far as hardscaping? Um, well, 
time is the biggest uh, the biggest benefit that we have. Um, I'll give you a perfect example. You've worked with Belgard products before. If, if you're doing a hundred foot walkway, four foot wide with Belgard products, how long is it going to take you to do it? Oh yeah, much longer. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's going to take you what? At least a week, right. two weeks. We we can do yeah yeah we yeah. we can do we can do a walkway just as long just as wide poured stamped and carved and ready to, or poured stamped and cut and ready to go in one day. Whoo man, you talk about some turnaround. That, that's, man, especially for you know being able to to have some massive production time too. Holy cow, that right. the uh, time is speed is the name of the game when it comes down to it. And when it comes to like the different types of combinations of what you can do, I mean, I've seen you make what retaining walls, different types of walkways, patios. I mean, my gosh, I think you made what a T-Rex one time. No, I'm just kidding. But like, what, <laughs> what are, what is the craziest thing that a customer had you make? Um, we're, we're actually in talks right now. Um, like I had mentioned before the interview, there's a, a customer that has uh, some existing plastic arbors over a couple of different walkways. We're going to take those out and I've explained the process to them and they're absolutely in love with it. We're going to take those arbors out and, and design and build two concrete trees that are going to come up and branch together at the top to, to in, a, in a sense, make the same kind of arbor. But they're going to be concrete trees rather than cheap plastic. So they'll, you know, as well as I do, they'll last forever. I definitely got to see that after it's done. Like you, that's going to be really cool to see. Are you going to paint them too, or is it going to be like just embedded, like con like coloring the concrete, or like what? Like how, how does that even work? Um, well, with the the process that we use for those, it's similar to the to the same process and materials that we use for our outdoor kitchens and uh, and uh, water features and things like that. We'll we'll start with uh, sauna tube, put some sauna tube up, stake it to the ground. We'll, we'll build around that with the materials that we use, and then we'll, we'll carve them and shape them and, and color them to look like trees. Oh, cool. So, yeah, you, so you're not, are you going to paint it, or are you going to have, like, actually color the concrete? We use, um, it, it's, it's kind of like a paint, it's kind of a, a mix between a paint and a dye. Okay. Um, it's, it's more of a stain, but it's more of a mineral-based stain, so it actually soaks into the concrete, and then once we seal it, it's, it's there. Ceiling part. That's the that was my next wonder because of the longevity of that. Because right. then after like you know that because that's the biggest thing. Any kind of papers, any kind of concrete, anything that I mean, heck, even wood for goodness sake, you got to seal it, <laughs> right? right and absolutely. Lock it in, man. Because the heck, that stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that way it yeah, doesn't erode. Con concrete is no different. I know a, a I know a, of a few people that uh, try to venture into to staining existing driveways and things like that. And that they forget that crucial step of sealing it, then they're back six months later to restain it. So yeah, absolutely, sealing is essential. Stain, seal, and I mean that's the, the <laughs> and that's the thing that most people won't get if they hire somebody who can do it cheaper, right? They don't think through those things because a lot of times people right. that can do it cheaper are in survival mode, and they're trying to just get the job done. Sometimes, I mean, right. heck, we've we've picked up projects in the past which we, you know, of course, made sure that with boundaries with the homeowner that they didn't take that junk and put it into with us, right? Like we ain't right. them kind of thing. Like don't don't make us out to be type of issue. And man, well, I, I got to ask too, like what's the craziest type of scenario that you've encountered when working with customers? Like what's the wildest thing that you've, that you've come across? Um, the wildest? I don't know. I, I really don't get too wild of a customer. Um, I've, I've I'm been, talking about them getting crazy with you. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> what, as far as like confrontations or whatnot? I mean, just anything. Any kind of misunderstanding. Um, anything. What was the craziest thing? You were like, what? Well, <laughs> our, our, our last customer is is a prime example. Um, she, she's a, it's a, a, an older couple, not too old. They're a few years older than I am. Um, and they the, the wife is a serious, no BS kind of woman she's a she's a nurse in a prison so she you know she walks the walk and talks the talk um she she doesn't put up with any bs she doesn't hold anything back um she's a, gonna let you know exactly how she feels which to me is fine because i would rather you tell me if there's something you don't like up front rather than you know write a nasty review on google without telling me um so yeah she she's i've heard some things come out of her her mouth that uh most women wouldn't say, 
Mm -hmm. um, and, and just some of her ideas, which actually helped us get to the to the point where we are with that project. Um, you know, I, I've shared some of my ideas with her. She shared, shared some of the things that she would like to see with me. And, and it's it's helped us come up with an entirely um, groundbreaking plan for her outdoor entertainment space. Hmm. But yeah, she's had she's had some pretty crazy ideas. Um, and the, the good thing about what we do is we can actually do it. You know, that people who use or co contractors that use natural stone or, or pavers or things like that wouldn't be able to do what we have planned to do in the upcoming months in this yard. Well, that's a, the one thing to note is that a lot of times with what you do, most folks who, are, who do do natural stone, and I can speak from experience, that you're limited. 100% limited on what you can do and can create and that's there's a lot of pros and cons to each one and it's pretty neat because no matter what texture no matter what feel people are going for you know it's it's really cool to be able to accommodate that especially like think outside of the box with them it's really neat and right. um and that's where even too like with working with customers with if you could go back and do things better like what would be something that you would immediately do in the beginning to create, like to, because we all have, you know, upon reflection, upon hindsight, because hindsight is 2020, right? You know, if you, if you could go back and do it, like three things better in your business, what would those three things be? Um, ask a lot more questions before I started my business. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at getting into the right groups, the, the right uh, group of people. And, and asking a ton more questions because when I first started, I knew nothing about business. I was always the worker, not the employer um, in a sense. So, you know, I, I knew zero about business. So I, I kind of, I followed the advice of a couple of people that said, just do it and figure it out along the way. Um, it, it, in one sense, it was kind of good because it, it forced me to ask the, the questions I needed to know the answers to rather than just a bunch of why am I asking that kind of question kind of questions. So it, it helped me to, to focus on what I needed to know rather than what I wanted to know. Um, so definitely ask, ask more of the right questions. Uh, listen to a lot broader scope of people rather than just a, a select few. Um, and definitely work more towards getting the business out there rather than relying on the nine to five or the seven to three thirty that I had at the time. Um, I knew I had that that kind of safety net, so I wasn't as aggressive as I as I could have been and should have been. Um, so yeah, definitely those things I would I would change going back. Yeah, those are good because like. <laughs> Asking, asking the right questions to get better answers, you know, having the right relationships, you build social capital and the right strategic partners, right? You know, because that's, that's the biggest thing. Like getting out there in the right groups, not only just the, not only like the online groups, but in the right groups of like the social circles, like really, truly, not the clicky groups, but the people that really, truly want to work to better the, their own backyard are the ones right. that, I mean, heck, even too, with our landscaping company, man, I mean, I'm telling you, like it literally is like, I mean, dude, we've been able to generate a massive pipeline, you know, without even having a website up and going just yet. You know, by the time people see this, it will be up and going, but but like we've been able to generate massive pipeline, five figures within a month, you know, just from strategic partnerships and the right circles and being in those right groups. And um, man, that's, that's huge. That's, that's absolutely huge because yeah, absolutely, especially when you're getting pushed out there, you have no choice but to ask those pertinent questions that only matter right. <laughs> because you've got other stuff. But when you're talking about your seven to three or nine to five, you know, you were, you were doing electrical work, if I'm not mistaken. And so, and that's one thing too, that's really neat about you is that with the, like, being able to create the walkways with the patios, outdoor lighting, you can, I'm pretty sure you you include that into your projects too, don't you? That you can, you can lay, do you lay? I, 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 I can, and, and I have for certain projects. Um, mm -hmm. I, I kind of, got away from it when we moved here um simply because it, it's an i'd have to go through the process of getting licensed here and you know yeah. I, i'm i'm working enough on on getting the business going that i really don't have the time or the really the desire to um to be able to include that service with what we do i, I think with what we do it's it's niche enough that you know it's really something i don't have to include so well, and that's something that I was about to hit on too, is that 
simplicity. You know, how many people had do you know that are in the service industry in general? Doesn't matter what industry or niche they're in. Um, how many of them that you know that are trying to do everything? Oh, absolutely. Like, absolutely. It's wild. Yeah. You know, and it's like the path to a million dollar business is not trying to do everything and serve everyone because then you're going to get diluted, overwhelmed. You got to cross train, you got to hire, you got to make sure that you have other people in place. If one person quits, you're screwed, right? Especially right. if you're piggybacking on somebody else's license. Right. Oh, it's not a refund that you want to encounter. Um, yeah, because that's that's a whew, man. Let's talk about the simplicity for a second. Like when it comes to the when it comes to offering more services than of your core, you know, because you want to make sure you have your core, you know, your people, your money makers, your profitable ones, your popular ones, and the ones you're doing is kind of like meh, you know, <laughs> kind of services. You're like that's cool when they come along, but other than that, you're like, no, thank you. You know, I mean, like, you know, but to the simplicity of your business with, with talking to the fact of licensing, which is absolutely important. What, what kind of relief did you experience when you were, when you, when that thought crossed your mind, when you started to really put it in place to so say, you know what, I'm not going to get my, my other electrical license. I'm not going to try and do more stuff out of the scope. Like, what was that? What did that feel like? Oh, it, it, it's really liberating. Mm -hmm. um, no one that, that, I was going to be doing X, Y, and Z rather than A through Z. Um, it, it, you know, it's a huge difference. It's a huge weight off my shoulders. And it really let me focus and dial into what I was doing. Yeah. And, you know, it, it allowed me to produce a better product yeah. overall. Well, yeah, and that's, um, I always make, I was like, there's a book that's called The Four Disciplines of Execution. Um, and I mean, that is a phenomenal book. If no one's ever listened or read that book, <laughs> Right. Listen, because I, I listen to my books, but um, but not like it talks about the power of focus. You know, if you do three, if you do two or three things, you can hit all three of them. You know, you probably do two of them really well. One of them you probably lag on. You know, if you do more than that, you're probably gonna, only going to do one thing well, you know, and why not instead of going bass backwards, right? Uh, how we say here in the style, you know, instead of going bass backwards and putting the cart before the horse, start with something and then build on it. Right. And then be able to expand from there. And, and that's, that's powerful. That's yeah. absolutely powerful. But man, no, I'm, I'm pumped for what's, what's to come, man. Like what, with everything that's happening down in Florida, what part of Florida are you in again? Wakala. 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 Okay. Make sure I pronounce that right. Wakala. Yeah. Okay. Wakala. We're, <laughs> we're cool. about an hour north of Orlando. Okay, cool. So within Wakala, Florida, like there's, I'm pretty sure there's plenty of business going around. I and mean, you probably, you know, when it comes to hiring, when it comes to being able to, you know, even to train other people, sometimes you're like, man, I don't have time to train. I just need to go do, you know? And what is, what are you experiencing as far as like the hiring in that area right now? Is it pretty slim, slim picking or is like, how is the training going with that area? Um, it's, with everything going on right now, it's hard, you know, like with everybody else, it's hard to find people that actually want to work. Um, uh, once, like I've got one guy now, he's a, uh, a former Marine. He's new to the area. Uh, was referred to me by another local veteran. Uh, really wants to work. He wants to learn something new. Got a taste of what we do. Um, he was he was having, uh, I won't say difficulties or anything like that. He he just moved down here and a couple of weeks after he moved here, which was a couple of days after he technically started with us, uh, he had to drive from here back to Arkansas to go pick up his son and come back. So he, he got a taste of what we do, was super excited about it. And then right when the, fir the first project he would have been on was getting ready to start, he had to leave. So he was, he was planning originally to be gone a couple of days and ended up getting sick while he was up there, him and his son both. So he was stuck up there for almost two weeks. Um, so he missed the entire project. But they, they both came out fine. They're, they're both uh, feeling very well and finally made it back down here. And then I, I had to go. I had a couple of things I had to pick up from the job site that I had left there. So I, I went back to go pick him up and uh, told him to meet me there so that he could see the finished product. And he got there and he was just, he was amazed. And he's so super excited to learn on the next one. And the benefits of what we do is I, I can go back and, well, not go back and forth. I can, I can keep in constant contact with our, with our clients 
and I informed our next one that we're going to, it, it, the project itself is, is just a few short retaining walls to, to uh, prevent erosion. Um, customers have, clients have a, a fairly new house. It was built kind of up on, they had to build up so that they could build this house. So all four sides sloped down. So they got like flower beds and things like that. Every time it rains, it just washes most of the sand away from it. So we're going in to put some walls, some short walls into uh, to help with that. And I've talked to the to the client and told them that I've got a new guy and possibly one more coming. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna do things a little non-traditional with this one. We're gonna we're gonna take our time, but not you know we'll still get it done before anybody else would be able to finish it. Um, but this way, I, you know, we can slow down and I can actually explain what I'm doing. I can take that time to train somebody. Whereas, you know, normally with most companies are exactly like you said, I, I don't have time to train. I just got to get it done. Uh, customers screaming at me. We're already so many weeks behind because of weather and this and that. So, you know, this, this next client is being super understanding with us. Um, she trusts us 100%. She, she's, you know, I, I've spent some time talking with her several times and, she, she's like, absolutely do what you got to do. As long as the finished product is, is what it's supposed to be and, and what it's supposed to do, I'm good. And I was like, amen. So yeah, absolutely. This, this next one, we're, we're going to take our time, go slow. Um, that way I can, I can train both the two new guys as well as my wife who's working with me. Um, Cause she, she didn't actually uh, go through the training process that I went through. So I'm trying to teach her at the same time because she's helping me to run the company. So she has to know what we're doing. Um, and she's 100%, you know, behind us, all, raring to go, wants to learn every aspect of what we do, which is super awesome. That's so, great. yeah, I'll be, I'll be able to slow down and actually train my guys and, and my wife on this next one. So it, it'll be a, it, it's a great opportunity. That's fantastic. And that's, that's where most folks want to be at is to be able to slow down and train because that's one of the biggest issues of hiring and onboarding employees. You know, it's not just trying to get a job. You know, great, you get a job, but then what? Right. You know, and that's the biggest, that's the biggest hangout for a lot of folks and really, truly trying to, trying to maintain that balance. You know, you got to maintain employees, you got to maintain jobs to feed the employees. But then even at the end of the day, even though the leader is the first one that shows up, he's the last one that gets paid. Right. right. And, you know, and that's the, whoo, man, that's the, that's a huge challenge. But, um, but I mean, that's something that, um, that that right there, your integrity, your your passion for what you do makes you stand out more than I mean, more than anybody. Because when it comes down to you, like, in this industry, period, people like it's it's wild how integrity makes you shine. It's sad at the same time, it really yeah. is. And you know, if, if people were to just keep their word and do their job, then ta da, their business would grow, right? Yeah. And, Absolutely. And, I mean, how many, I, I will end with this, but how many jobs have you come in to help fix? I'm just curious. Oh my goodness. Um, quite a few, you know, actually <laughs> a like couple half of, of them or like, what uh, would you say? Uh, about a third. About a third. Okay. Yeah. I actually had one that, that I quoted originally and, and they went with, they decided to go with somebody else, you know, of course, cause they were cheaper right. and it was a retaining wall and their retaining wall started failing after about six months. And, and then they called me and normally I, I felt bad because it was an older couple. Um, normally I, I would, I would charge the, what I call a 30% stupid tax, um, you know, because they, they wanted to go with the cheaper option in the beginning and now I got to go fix it. Yeah. You know, but I felt bad for them because I, I know they're, you know, they we wouldn't call it stupid tax. We just call it a hollow fee. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so yeah, you know, I, I knew they were on a limited income. So, uh, you know, I, I took it easy on them and, and I went in and fixed it and they were super happy with the results and uh, really it wasn't a whole lot of work for me. So, you know, well, that's good to hear, man. And that's one of the, that's one of the funnest things and most fascinating things about the industry is that just being able to, to know your numbers. Like you, if you don't know your numbers, then you can't help and you can't negotiate and you can't, you know, can't find leeway or find ways to cut cost or it involved remaining, you know, having the instructional integrity, keeping your moral integrity, being able to, to find that balance, I think is one of the biggest challenges that most business owners have because they don't know their numbers. Yep. You know, and sure. that's that allows that allows you to be able to step in there, be of help, be of aid, but even in other ways, even to like introducing stuff like financing or lines of credit for folks to even break it down even further, you know, are just very powerful ways, man. 
Well, man, I'm, 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 I appreciate you being able to come on the show. I really do. Like, there's a lot of stuff that I know you bring to the table and we didn't cover everything even throughout this episode, mm -hmm. but with everything and, and how, what you bring to the table, how can people get in touch with you? Um, it, several ways. Of course, I got my website. Um, that's uh, www.cfdhardscapes.com. I'm on Facebook. I've got uh, both my business page for CFD Hardscapes. Um, my personal page, I've also got my public figure page, which is the Hardscape Hacker. Um, I'm on most of the, of the social media platforms, LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, Twitter, I need, I need to be more active on, but yes, I am on there. Um, still debating whether or not to get on TikTok. Still, still kind of iffy, but you know, we'll, we'll, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, I've, I've seen a couple of people actually doing well with it. So, you know, we might give it a go. So. Well, awesome, man. And everyone, if, well, as you're listening and watching this episode, his information is going to be in the description of this episode. So if you miss what he was saying, you'll be able to click on that and get in touch with him. And especially if you're in the locale area, uh, get a hold of Mark Dudek, the hardscape hacker to take care of your project. Because at the end of the day, you need somebody who's going to show up and also finish the job. Because at the end, I mean, honestly, time is of the essence and speed is the name of the game. And man, I appreciate you coming on here onto the show, Trades and Secrets, man. And I wish you well in your business and I pray the most success for you if possible. I appreciate it, man. Again, I'm honored to be the, the first guest. So uh, yeah. yeah, blown away. Awesome, man. I appreciate you coming on.